put GMO labeling on its GM cereal. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story, plus who gives a damn about the profits of Tesco? But first, Jean-Claude Van Damme took over a French news station to drop truth bombs about the ruling class. Activist Post has the story with a little bit of context first. Last month, the Free Thought Project reported on the -the above-the-law tax haven established inside the U.S. by the Rothschilds. Before that, Baron David de Rothschild was indicted by the French government after he was accused of fraud in a scheme that allegedly embezzled large sums of money from British pensioners. We call them retirees here in the States. Earlier this month, the French government announced that it has launched an investigation into the entire Swiss branch of the Rothschild's banking empire. So the world seems to be waking up to the fact that these powerful families operate in a legal class far separated from the rest of us. Appearing on a French television show, Le Grand Journal, the Grand Journal, Jean-Claude Van Damme showed the world that even he is aware of the control and power of the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. He was invited on the French show to speak about the U.S. elections. However, he quickly hijacked the narrative and went on about a two-minute rant to explain how the Rothschilds and Rockefellers assert their banking influence over the world, saying, quote, in relation to the cruises and the other phonies in the emotional con game of the presidential selection race, well, they're not going to win. You still have the Rockefeller, people like the Rothschilds, those big families that dominate continents. So it's not even France here. We're talking continents. These are families that rise in 1827, a family with five sons that expands. It's above everything we're talking about tonight. So you have lobbyists, people that are candidates to elections, and then you have people like Donald Trump who have, what, 10 billion euros? He might have more, but that's what he declares in legal documents. In any case, if I myself have goods and worked all my life for my families, my friends, and my country where I pay my taxes, what he wants first, in my opinion, is to protect his interests. Whereas someone who works for free is someone dangerous. It's true we have problems with globalists, but what he says in a way to get out of globalism is to leave the world alone. It's a different philosophy. And then the host, Tim, tries to kind of take control back of the show, and he basically says, hang on a second, you asked me if I knew politics. I'm aware. Basically saying, you thought I was a dummy action movie guy, but you didn't think I would actually know about what's really going down in the world. We have seen many, many times many, many celebrities speak out on a lot of different levels. Hopefully we can see it more. And ultimately, these are just signposts. We can't hang everything that we know already hoping some celebrity says something about 9-11 or or what have you. And we've had a lot of these victories, and we've had a lot of these joys over the last decade or so. But ultimately, it's going to be about what you say and what you take over at your workplace or, or, or any type of situation. Our cover story this week on Good News Next Week, episode 11 for March 21st, 2016. The big story you've heard all around the world, and we got the tweet from our buddy James at Corbett Report. General Mills to label U.S. products with genetically modified ingredients. American food manufacturer General Mills announced last Friday that it will begin labeling all its products in the U.S. that have genetically modified organisms as ingredients. The move was prompted by a new state law in Vermont, which requires companies to put such info starting July 1st. However, the company can't label products for only one state without driving up costs for the consumers, said General Mills Vice President Jeff Harmoning. So the company's response is to put labels nationwide. Still, Harmoning said one thing is needed to tackle the issue of genetically modified food, a national solution. All sides of this debate, 20 years of research, and every major health and blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, this doesn't matter, you guys, and I know we've talked about this a lot. What matters is the choice. What matters is your choice, and I think the choices we've already started to make are forcing the big boys to make choices that they only know how to make, the bottom line. They only know how to do it in the money, and we've been hitting them in the money, so that's why they are changing. And we've been talking about this for the last several months as we've been doing this Good News Next Week show, and we've been talking about it for years in our Food World Order coverage on Media Monarchy. So General Mills, it should be noted, they own Haagen-Dazs and Nature Valley and Cheerios, and we've already seen, as we reported right here, Campbell's Soup. Going to start labeling. Chipotle, Whole Foods, and other places are either labeling or abandoning them altogether. Meanwhile, organizations like the GMA, the Grocery Manufacturers Association, are still 
hammering it and this kind of battle isn't over. But I think this gets to the heart of what we're talking about and I think what we discuss and what we sometimes argue about in here. I'm not up here trying to call for more laws of this and more force to that. When it comes down to it, we can all make these choices and we can hope push that across and not through laws, just through doing it. On a personal note, interestingly enough, I was actually at the grocery store yesterday and I was looking at pasta as a good Italian boy would and I saw the shelf had all these tags saying non-GMO product project verified for Ronzoni pasta and I was like since when did those guys go non-GMO but indeed they have gone non-GMO they are owned and a lot of other pasta companies are owned apparently by New World Pasta and their entire line has earned non-GMO project verification across, again, a ton of well-known pasta brands. We will include that link to non-gmoproject.org. And again, reminder that we include links to everything we say and play on these episodes. Our final story this week, I asked, who gives a damn about the profits of Tesco? That's something Franz Ferdinand sang several years ago. And the answer to that question is, Tesco gives a damn about the profits of Tesco. But they have announced, and we get this good news tweet by our buddy at Bo Boi, Tesco to donate all unsold food to charity. One of the UK's largest supermarkets announced last week it would donate all of its unsold food products to charity by the end of 2017, partnering with a food sharing organization Fair Share to ensure that products are simply not thrown away. Quote, we believe no food that could be eaten should be wasted. That's why we've committed that no surplus food should go to waste from our stores, said Chief Executive Dave Lewis when he announced the new initiative. He went on to say, we know it's an issue our customers really care about. And wherever there's surplus food at Tesco stores, we're committed to donating it to local charities so we can help feed the people in need. So in addition to committing to work with over 5,000 charities through Fair Share, they're also providing resources to Food Cloud, a digital platform where stores upload information about their unsold surplus food and send a text message to the charities they've been matched up with telling them what's available. The charity then picks it up for free and then turns meals for local people in need. So again, that's just another way that we're not calling for laws. I know there was a bit of argument about the story about in France forcing grocery stores to give it away. And a lot of people said, well, as a voluntarist or as an anarchist, I, I can't get behind you know, forcing companies to do things. Here we see a situation where they haven't been forced to do it, not by law. They've been forced to do it by, again, what they care about, what's in or in this case isn't in their wallets. And we've reported on Tesco for the last several years on MediaMonarchy.com as they just got busted very recently cooking the books and not in a good food kind of way either. Last couple of headlines that have been tweeted out to us by you at hashtag good news next week. U.S. Supreme Court declines to referee state disputes over marijuana as Colorado's neighboring states start to freak out that the drug war is coming to a very rapid conclusion. <laughs> Beer hops may soon be a key ingredient in antibacterial medications. And again, we were talking about turning wasted bread into beer a few weeks ago here on Good News Next Week. And the last note, SeaWorld agrees to end captive breeding of killer whales, another way that taking our money away from corporations forces them to try and do the right thing. Now, I contend in a lot of these situations, I don't eat General Mills cereals, I've never been to SeaWorld in my life, I don't eat Campbell's soup, and hopefully you guys have removed your money from these places as well. But you can see what is happening, and you can see what they care about. And we're forcing, I think, a lot of change that way. If you support our independent, non-commercial alternative work, and we've been putting it out since 2005 here at MediaMonarchy.com, I wish you'd go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and find a way to give us a little bit of support so we can give you a lot of media. This has been Good News Next Week, Episode 11 for March 21st, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. <laughs>